Hello my friends, Patrick God here and you keep asking me about authentication and authorization in Blazor WebAssembly. Well, you've read the title, here you are, this is now the video. So if you have any issues with the Blazor WebAssembly or you just want to know, hey, how do you do that stuff with authentication, you heard something about an authentication state provider maybe, I think now this is the right video for you. What we are going to do is we will create a Blazor WebAssembly project, of course, I create a ASP hosted project as you will see you can see in the tutorial i already recorded that so maybe i will repeat that in the tutorial as well but anyways i will create an ASP.NET core hosted project or solution now why is that well i have that feeling that maybe we will build a part two out of this but you can totally do that with just the the client project but i think you already got your blazer web assembly project anyways and you now just want to implement the authentication stuff so either way this is the right tutorial for you if you use a json web token because what we will do is we will will use a hard-coded JSON web token in essence for all the uh, creation of JSON web tokens and all that web API authorization stuff. Check out this video here. <laughs> I've got a bunch of videos for JSON web tokens and authentication and so on with the web API. So maybe this is something for you. But now let's focus on Blazor WebAssembly. We add a custom authentication state provider. We will use the authorized view component together with the authorized and not authorized components. Lots of stuff, of course, also with roles. So I think lots of information and knowledge already there. And if you learn something, then I would really appreciate it if you click the like button, maybe even subscribe to my channel it does make a difference and don't forget to click the bell icon to get a notification when i upload a new video currently this is happening every week so maybe you really want to subscribe thank you very much for that additionally if you want to get videos like this one here earlier in your inbox and also early access to upcoming courses like the e-commerce course that is coming this month I'm confident that this it's coming this month. Then maybe you want to subscribe to my newsletter. That would be also really, really nice. Thank you very much. Promise won't spam you. At most, I send an email once a week. And last not least, everybody, thank you so much for all your support, for all your coffees. Really, really appreciate it. I love you forever, guys. And if you want to do that as well, please check out the video description. There are all the links also to the GitHub repository. So if you don't want to watch the video and just get the code, then well, Stop the video if you want, go down to the video description and then get the code. But I would really appreciate it if you just keep watching. Maybe it's a better way to learn. I don't know. Long story short, enjoy the tutorial. All right, we create a new project and this time, well, as almost always, it's a Blazor WebAssembly app. We click next and let's call this Blazor, well, authentication tutorial maybe. Hit next, the framework we want to use is .NET 6, of course. No authentication, we configure this for HTTPS, no progressive web app, but not really necessary, but still uh, I select ASP.NET Core hosted because I have a feeling that maybe uh, there will be a sequel to this tutorial here, part two or maybe also three. Uh, so in this tutorial now we will only use the client project. Let's just hit create when I talk here and um, yeah, we will just use the client project. There it is already. That was fast, nice. As you can see, we've got the server, the shared and so on. Because what I wanna do here in this client project or in this tutorial, that we will use a hard-coded JSON web token. I know, I know, I know, I know. It would be better, of course, to see how you create a JSON web token. But if you wanna see that, check out the info card. I've got a bunch of, uh, videos already here on my YouTube channel about authentication with the web API, role-based authorization, creating JSON web tokens, login, registration, and so on. So please check this out. And with that knowledge, you can totally make this happen here. But if I make this now and put it in here, then there's too much, I would say too much stuff on the server side and we don't really need that. I want to focus on on the blazer client here so long story short only the client but maybe there will be a part two if you want to see a part two where I combine this then the web api creating json web tokens with then the uh, authentication and authorization part on the blazer web assembly client you know what you have to do please comment in the comment section below this video so Authentication now. First thing, very first thing we have to do to make this happen is install a NuGet package. So right click the client project, manage NuGet packages, 
make sure to select the browse tab. I don't know why the default is the install tab. I always make this make this um, mistake that I, I, I'm searching here, don't find the package and I don't know, it takes some time to realize, hey, wrong tab. So browse tab it is and then Microsoft is it there? Yeah, there it is already. Microsoft ASP.NET Core Components. Make sure that it's components and then authorization. There's also another uh, namespace, Microsoft ASP.NET Core, and then already authorization. You already got this. You don't have to install this. And this one you have to install authentication and authorization support for Blazor applications. So Microsoft ASP.NET Core Components, authorization it is, install, say OK, accept. All right. And now with that, make sure to also edit here to your imports Razor file with using Microsoft ASP.NET Core. And here you see that there's an authorization already, but we want components and then authorization. All right, we save this. And then we change the app Razor a little. You see it here, there's the route view. And if you are, you're already a bit familiar with Blazor, and I think you are because you wouldn't start with authentication if you're a total beginner to Blazor, then, you know, with the route view, you will display your pages here. And you see that the main layout, this file here is used for the default layout and so on. If you're not familiar with that stuff, maybe have a look at my other videos here on my channel, or maybe you want to check out the Blazor Bootcamp or the still upcoming Blazor e-commerce course, although this is also a bit advanced. Blazor Bootcamp, great course. I think people like it, I hope. At least they say that, even got jobs thanks to this uh, course, so maybe this is for you. But anyways, let's continue. Instead of using the route view, we want to use the authorize route view here. With that, our application knows if the user is authorized or not. And additionally, we will use another component and this is the cascading authentication state. There it is already. So we need these two cascading authentication state and the authorize route view. One more thing we can do for a bit better user experience we can close it here and then add a, a text by ourselves if the user is not authorized, for instance, and not allowed to see a page. So what we can do now here is add another component not authorized and say, sorry, but you're not allowed to see this, right? Something like that. Because otherwise, if you would not use this uh, not authorized component, then I think the text is just not authorized. And that's it. So yeah, not very nice. And here we could add something like, hey, we're not allowed to see this, but maybe you want to log in or register or I don't know, some stuff like that. And uh, that's the app razor file. App razor file. And with that out of the way, we can already create the authentication state provider. Very important here in Blazor WebAssembly. Well, the name already says it, it provides the current authentication state. And this is an abstract class. So we have to create our custom authentication state provider. And for that, we right click the client project again. We add a new class. And then we say custom auth state provider, for instance. And in here now, we inherit from authentication state provider. We need a using directive here. Again, this was the one we installed. And since we've got C sharp 10 in here, let's make something crazy. We add the using here and we add a global. And with that, yeah, we know this abstract class here. And what does it say? It provides information about the authentication state of the current user. Crazy. Okay, this is an abstract class, so we have to implement it. As you can see here, it does not implement the method get authentication state async. Control period on my keyword. 
shows us this quick fix menu. Of course, you can also click on the light bulb here and then we implement the abstract class and you see there's the method. And now we have to do something with that. But before we can do that, we have to register the authentication state provider. And we do that now with .NET 6 in the program CS. And this looks like that. Builder services add scoped. And then in angle brackets, authentication state provider. So whenever we want to use or need an authentication state provider, we use our now custom auth state provider. And that's it. And additionally, we need something else. And that would be builder services at author that it was authorization core. Does it say something here? Yeah, adds authorization services to the specified iService collection. All right. So you see lots of stuff, lots of boilerplate code in essence. We need to make authentication and authorization happen here with Blazor. Now, thing is, um, what we can do is we could create a, another page just for the authentication here, but we can also just use the counter for instance. So what is happening here? Jesus, use please. I, do this all the time. Use the correct shortcut to save everything. It's Control K and S, at least in my in my case. And uh, when when we start this now, let's see what happens. I guess the page crashes. Nothing works. There it is. Loading. Yeah, you see it already. Now we've got our custom authentication state provider. Of course, we're returning a not implemented exception. But even if we um, if we uh, comment this out. As you can see here, well, it wouldn't even build because we have to return something. So we have to implement something. Otherwise, it just does not work. And how would we do that? Now, the very first thing we will do here in the uh, in our custom authentication state provider, let me just close the app first is we need a token. And as I already said, I don't want to implement the server stuff here. No web API. I've got other videos for that. But again, if you want, tell me and I will make a part two here with this video for this video. And uh, then we will grab the token or create the token on the server. But for now, let's just say, of course, I have a document open with a token. And that would be fun because now you don't know what is inside of this token. You don't know who's the user, what's his role, what's the expiration date and so on. There's the token. Uh, well, you can try to read the token, copy it, but um, I think that's, that's pretty hard work. Of course, I've got the token for you to copy. Just look at the video description. There's the GitHub repository where I will push this code, this whole tutorial code. So of course, you don't have to bother with this. Uh, but maybe you also already have your your own code to create such a token, a JSON web token. And uh, then you can use this one as well, of course. So long story short, we've got our token. And now the auth state provider. Now the thing is, what we have to do here is we have to return a state. And this state well, this thing needs uh, a claims principle and a claims principle needs a claims identity. Now you know what, right? It's, it's simple. Well, not really, of course, as always, if you know it, it is. But first thing we need is our identity. And in essence, this is our uh, user somehow. So this is a new claims, claims identity. Is that correct? Let's see. Yeah, we need another reference here, system security claims. And now with that, when if this is empty, then this means that the user is not authorized. And I would say uh, we start with with this uh, situation here, and then we build the app, run it, and then see what, what is actually happening here. So with that identity, we create a new user, which is a claims principle. So var user, that's it already. So new claims principle, and we give this claims principle the identity. And then we've got our state and the state is a new authentication state with that user now. What you can then do 
don't have to, but uh, I'd really recommend that, is uh, raise this event here, notify authentication state changed, raises the authentication state provider authentication state changed event. And this means that we have to give this thing the, the state, so task from result state. And when you do this and you've got components that um, that want to know what is the current authentication state and they subscribe to this thing and then uh, well they will get a notification in essence that the authentication state has been changed and maybe they have to do something so does not hurt to to raise this event and here in the end now we return the state and of course we have to add the async keyword to make this work so Again, we already pasted the token here, but we don't use it now. We just create an empty identity, and this means the user is not authorized, all right? So this is how you tell our app, okay, no user or not an authorized user here. And um, then we create a user out of that with a state, return this. Now, of course, what we will do in a couple of minutes, we will add the user here but maybe with a role that uh, is not the proper one, the user needs to see something, but one step after another. With that, the app should run now, so let's start it. I really hope it runs. Um, I'm not that prepared as always. There it is, all right, nice. Okay, refresh. Yep, this looks good. So this is the typical uh, Blazor app. You know this, of course, and nothing changed really, right? So we've got our authentication stuff, but um, the app did not really change. But now what we can do is we can add something to the counter page, for instance, and that would be, again, some components like the authorized view. So let's just add the authorized view here, not the route view. Now it's just the authorized view. And um, let's add a text here. Do you see this? Okay, rebuild is great. Let's have a quick look. Uh-uh, nothing here, but you can see that something is happening here in the console. Authorization failed we don't see the content here. But now again, what we can do is we can use the not authorized component. Let's run this by the component. Yep, that should be it. And now we see, do you see this? And let me add a paragraph here. Okay, hot reload magic works. We see authorization failed, but of course now we see that because this is surrounded by the not authorized component. So we can now say you're not authorized, buddy, already, already here. Sometimes I'm amazed by the hot reload feature and sometimes it just does not work at all. Okay, so this is already really really great because you can control your content you can you can decide what you want to, to display if the user is authorized or not now of course we need an authorized user to display something and for that we use the uh, authorized component now so again short recap if you just use the authorized view then it's in essence just just that it's this would be the same we have the authorized view and also the authorized component but if you want to display something else when the user is not authorized then you need the uh, other component here not authorized all right so much authorized okay now with authorized let's just copy that all right paste it here you're authorized like that maybe all right and of course we don't see that now yes rebuild and apply so we have to create a valid user now in the custom auth state provider for that we have to parse the json web token 
As far as I know, there is no built-in function in Blazor yet. So we have to uh, write some stuff by ourselves. And there was this great guy, or still is this great guy called Steve Sanderson. There it is. And he created some code already in 2019 that parses this token. And these are the methods we need for that. So first we uh, pass a base64 string, string, which is that token without the padding. Add some characters here. And then he, uh, he well, passes this, JW, this JSON web token and gets the claim from there as key value pairs. So we can copy this and again, just have a look at the GitHub repository and copy it from there as well, please. So kudos to Steve Sanderson. This is really, really great stuff. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm copying this here because this is just tedious work. And I don't know, this would just take some time that you really don't need to use here. So to make this quick, uh, just copy this at the reference here for the JSON serializer, and then uh, we should be good to go. Okay, so we've got the code here, and with that then we can uh, parse our JSON web token, of course. So now in here, let's just copy that so we can uh, switch between authenticated and not authenticated users. So let's comment this out, and in here now we just say parse claims from JWT with our token string here. And then we add JWT as authentication type. As you can see here, initializes a new instance of the claims identity class with the specified claims and authentication type. Okay. So that should be it already. Well, let's have a look. You're authorized. Hooray, isn't that great? So this <laughs> <laughs> this is it. So this is how we authorize the user now. But of course, there's still some stuff that I want to show you. For instance, we um, we added the uh, the not authorized here in the authorized route view, and we did not see that yet. So um, let's maybe let's add something. So uh, you will see what I, I, I mean by that. And after that, we will also add the roads. So first, what about this stuff? This is uh, for complete pages. So let's say we've got our counter page here and there are not just parts of the page. Uh, you you only, want to say, only want to show authorized or not authorized users. It's about the complete page. And for that, you can use an attribute and similar to the web API. Maybe you know this already. You can use the attribute authorize this thing here. And for that, see here, we need another using directive and that will be Microsoft ASP.NET Core authorization now. Thing I talked about earlier, but we can also add it here, of course, not with components now, just ASP.NET Core authorization. And then we go back here then this uh, attribute works. And again, we now go back to our page. We're still here. But if you now switch to the unauthorized user uh, here in the custom auth state provider, so let's comment this out and this back in. We save this and start the app again. We see, sorry, but you're not allowed to see this. And as I also mentioned, when I remove this thing here, like that, then it says, okay, maybe we have to restart the app again. Not authorized. Pretty boring, right? So I think it's better to to add some text here or what. There is there is still one option that I really like. What we can do, of course, is 
add an image, maybe with a width here, because this is a pretty big image. So let's say 600, and that's the source. And now what happens? Nice, all right, okay. So now you see if the user is not authorized, we see this little image here. And if the user is, we don't. Okay, that's great, so this works. Now let's, let's just use this user again. Stop the app for whatever reason. And the last thing now we have to check is the role. So authentication in essence works. We can use parts of a page for authentication or authorization and also a complete page here. So now our user can access this page and see this cool text. But what about the roles? Now, you can access the username as well. What do I, why do I say this? The, the name is a claim in the token, right? And the role is in essence exactly the same. Now, let's see how we can access the name, for instance. When we want to say you're authorized as, and then the name, so you're authorized as, and then we can access the context. And this is now only available because of all the authorization stuff. And with that context, then we get the user, the identity, and then, for instance, the name. Right, and this is this is a claim. So when you're creating a JSON web token in your web API, for instance, again, have a look at the other videos, then at one point you add the claim with the claim type name there. There's also name identifier, all other stuff is there as well, and also the role, of course. But let's let's start with the name, for instance. So we save this and stop the, start the app again. Let's see, yeah, this works already. That's nice, right? So now we see the name of the user, which is Tony Stark, apparently. So you're authorized as Tony Stark. That's great. So this is how you get the name. And now the other important thing is finally the role. And to use the role, you can simply add roles here. And then let's say we only want Spider-Man to access this stuff here. We reload the page. Ah, now we see that you're not authorized, buddy. All right, Tony Stark's not Spider-Man. And what about the role Iron Man, for instance? You're authorized as Tony Stark. Great. And what about the complete page? Let's see. Here now in uh, parentheses, we can also say roles. And then for instance, Spider-Man, it's rebuilding, you shall not pass, all right. And what about Iron Man? You're authorized as Tony Stark. Great. So, and this is everything I wanted to show you in essence. That's it already. One more thing regarding the token, you can always go to the page, there it is, JWTIO, and in here now, of course, you can also paste the token. Is it here still? Nope, that wasn't correct. Of course, this was the uh, image address, but let me grab the token again from our code here. This thing back to the page, there it is now, and here you can see everything I added. So the role is Iron Man, the name is Tony Stark, and the expiration date is May 29th, 2070. And if you know why I chose this date, then please write your answer in the comments. Okay, and the very last thing, let's push this to GitHub. That would be the Blazor authentication tutorial. This is a public repository. Create and push. And 
we are done. All right, that's it. Again, I think lots of stuff already. You know what packages you have to install. Well, there's only one package. It's still an important package, right? You know what components you have to use, what you have to change in the imports file. The app eraser file has to be modified. We also created our custom authentication state provider. So lots of stuff. Maybe for part two, we can use the web API, of course. We can also use the notification states has changed event. I think this is the proper name with other components. Lots of stuff, of course, we can still do. If you can't wait for the other videos, please check out the Blazor Bootcamp. There you will learn all that. So maybe this is something for you. And apart from that, if you learned something, as always, I'd really appreciate it if you click the like button, maybe even subscribe to my channel, hit the bell icon to get a notification for new videos. And additionally, maybe the newsletter is something for you. Would really appreciate that as well. Well, last not least, again, guys, I love you so much for all your support. All the coffees really need that. As always, in essence, my boy is asleep again and the coffee is keeping me awake. And now after recording this, I'm pretty happy to edit all that stuff. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very, very much for your time. I hope to see you next time. Take care.